Bias is the difference between the reference value and the measured value. The bias study establishes whether the measurement system is measuring significantly offset. The bias study is performed by taking repeated measures of the same component. The mean of the readings is compared with the reference value. At the beginning, establish the reference value of a part by a traceable standard measure. The reference can either be a master or a component selected from your production parts. This should preferably measure around the mid-range of your production parts. If a production part is selected, its reference value is established by a better measurement system than the one being studied. Measure the part repeatedly more than 10 times. The measurements should be taken by a single appraiser in a normal manner according to the standard measuring practice. Enter the measured data and the reference value in the Pro-MSA Bias Study Worksheet. Let us enter the process variation observed for the process from which the reference part comes. We can obtain this information from SPC studies conducted on the part. We express the process variation in terms of the process standard deviation. We also enter the tolerance on the part being used as a reference. This information is found on the part drawing or the specification sheet. The confidence level set by default is 95%. This is used to perform statistical calculations on our data. The AIAG MSA standard recommends that a 95% confidence should be used for bias evaluation. Any other value of confidence may be used only with the prior consent of the customer. Now we are ready with our data. On the click of the Calculate button, ProMSA will evaluate your data and display results in a traffic signal format. On the right, signals are given for instrument repeatability. Instrument repeatability is compared with the process variation and the tolerance. A high percent repeatability implies that the instrument variation is overshadowing the process variation. The instrument may not be suitable to measure the process from which the reference part is coming. Any evaluation of bias from such data can be misleading. The signal for bias acceptance tells you whether you have a statistically significant bias in the instrument. This is established by performing a t-test on your data. A significantly high bias is unacceptable. For detailed analysis, look at the histogram plot on the next tab. A bell-shaped curve with one peak indicates that the study works under a random cost system and is free from any unbalanced external influences. The scatter plot shows you how far the repeated measures are scattered from the reference value. A close scatter shows a good repeatability. Results of statistical analysis are displayed in the table next to the plots. For acceptance of the bias study, the p-value associated with the test should be greater than the significance level. Also, zero should fall within the confidence bounds on the bias. The bias study can be unacceptable on two counts. One, the percent repeatability could be high. The instrument variation is too high to effectively measure the process making the reference part. In such a case, the instrument may require maintenance or calibration to improve its repeatability. If this is not possible, consider selecting a better instrument for measuring the process. Second, the bias could be significantly high. This situation can usually be corrected by calibration. If this is not possible, a constant term can be added to each reading taken by this instrument to compensate for the bias. 
The bias study is performed to verify whether the instrument is measuring offset in a significant manner. The test also reflects on the calibration state of the instrument and establishes the suitability of the instrument to measure the process. Bias study should also be performed when the instrument is initiated into a new process.